Oof, another Friday night and there's nowhere else we'd rather be than here on the set of Delmarva Sports Insider. Alongside the local legend, he's also verified. I'm Ryan Elgin, this is Trayvon Miles. Not too far away is Drew Williams. That's exactly right. Welcome into the Delmarva Sports Insider, the only place yeah. that you need to be as a sports <laughs> fan on a Friday night, especially here on Delmarva. We had a ton of big games uh, earlier this week and it followed on to Friday. Yeah, keep your head on a swivel as they say out on the football yes. field because there's a lot going on yep. tonight and we are starting with football. Yeah. Why not? Easy guess, right? Yeah, it was, yeah. It was hard. Easily the game of the year in the Bayside North, a showdown. Easton with a prime chance at home Gotta win. on homecoming. Yeah, homecoming. Right? Gotta get it to done. end North Carolina's undefeated season. <laughs> Where else do you want that to happen? Ooh. Of course, the Bulldogs looking to stay atop the conference rankings in the North. Hearing it from a hostile territory on homecoming. Very first play from scrimmage. Oh, what an effort. This is how you quiet them down. Montrese the Shields doing the work. 52 yards on effort, the pass from the Wyatt LeClaire. That is how you get the home crowd yes, to sir. quiet. Easton able to get on the board, though. Right, Ryan O'Connor, touch pass to Sean Warner. He takes yes, it sir. in from two yards. Cuts it to a seven-point deficit, but nobody stopping the ridge tonight. The Bulldogs in the red zone. Trenton Hill. <laughs> Yeah, two-yard <laughs> touchdown. I see you, number 32. North Carolina up two scores at this point. Yeah, you Ooh, think man, they would show down? Again. No. The Shields, one more time, taking the handoff. Easy work. The Warriors' defense barely touches them on that one. Six points, four oh, seconds they, oh, left in the, in the half. Uh, LeClaire connecting to the Shields. I think this guy is probably going to be player of the player week. Player of the week. North yeah. Carolina shows why they are still on top of the Bayside with a final of 49 to seven. 49 oh to seven. Yeah. Wow. Unbelievable. Tough night for Easton. Uh, he should be the, the sword, not the shield, <laughs> because I uh, got that offensive mentality. Three touchdowns tonight. Easton, though, they can't seem to stop the bleeding after a rough loss last week. Turnaround, yeah. not good tonight either. Yeah, total letdown for them tonight. I mean, let's be yeah, honest about good. things. I mean, you had this team uh, coming to you on homecoming yeah. at home, a packed place uh, right there off of Route 50. Um, and, you know, a letdown, you know, and I, I'm Big not even going to say that the score, if the score was a little bit closer, it would have been a moral victory for the Warriors, uh, but they wanted to win. Coach McGlinchey and his crew definitely wanted to beat this team. It was only a 14-3 to game last year. This year, right. they're thinking, uh, you know, to hunker down and get the win at home this time, um, and it did not happen. One I interesting thing to me right. uh, is what Easton looks like when things aren't going their way. They just cannot you seem to stop that, the so bleeding. Media, yeah, yeah they, they just cannot seem to stop the right. bleeding. Uh, you know, they scored 21 nothing on Delmar, went up. Uh, Delmar goes and scored 35 unanswered. North Carolina comes out. First play from scrimmage. That is not how you want to start your homecoming. <laughs> yeah, the 50 yard touchdown. Yeah, and absolutely. This thing, too, I feel like North Carolina has gotten better as the season has oh, progressed. Goodness. Like you said, Easton had to have had this game circled on the schedule. Yeah. And you've got to have a better <laughs> result than yeah. that. You know what? It's really, you, we, we cannot underestimate how impressive North Carolina Always. has been. Imagine yeah. being the target every single Friday night. Every Everybody's time you game go, circled, yeah. every time you go out to play, Guys are circling your game as an upset, and every single week they come out and uh, do their thing. It yeah. is very impressive. But they were not the only teams in action tonight. Right. And for more on action <laughs> in the Bayside, we send it over to the wall to Mr. Drew Williams. Hey, Drew. What's going on, Trey? Of course we got more games. We always do, right? Always working here on a Friday. But we got a battle in the Burry. Two schools getting together here in Salisbury. With Bennett and Parkside, it's always two, it's always a good game when these two to get together. The Ram Fam and the Bleacher Creatures both representing tonight. Parkside ahead 7-0, but Bennett's going to answer with a score of their own. Jordan Mitchell's going to punch it in from one yard out. Clippers able to take an 8-7 lead, but the Rams, they're able to come right back. Three plays later, Davion White is going to take the sweep off the left side, beat one defender to the corner, going to show off a little stiff arm. And then he's going to take it 51 yards all the way to the end zone. Parkside build up a 14 to 8 lead after one quarter and will be looking for a little more. Rams going to drop back to pass. Quarterback Makai Smiley decides to pull it down, take him himself. He coughs up the ball and Troy Gibson recovers for JMB. The kid just makes plays, folks. And the Rams going to find their groove. Back inside the Renzo and they're going to hand it off to Malachi Jones. Jones with a strong run for the score. Parkside clinches an outright city championship with a 28-15 win over JMB. 
And then up the road with Seaford in a cross-state matchup with Washington. Both teams winless on the year. Blue Jays up big and looking to pile things on. Booker to Shields is going to evade a couple of defenders. He's going to juke a couple more and carry a couple more for 63 yards into Jaguar territory. And the Birds even led 28 to 6 at one point. And the defense, of course, doing their thing as well. Edward Mann being the man himself, man among boys for the Jays defense. He's going to pick up the sack on the play. The Blue Jays win huge in this ball game, picking up their first one of the year, shutting down the Jags pretty well. And then down to Berlin with Steven Decatur hosting the Buccaneers from Kent Island. Decatur driving to take the lead when there's a fumble in the backfield. It's going to be scooped up and taken 90 plus yards by Cheney Stearns for the KI score. Defense getting it done for the Buccaneers early. 10 to nothing KI leads early in the second. And we got to give some love to the special teams. Decatur's the Cameron McAfee is going to block the Kent Island punt. Austin Aries is going to pick it up and take it all the way to the Kent Island five yard line. I don't know they convert on it though. Ken Island's going to get things going with the passing game as well though. Matt Burnside going to air things out. He's going to find Cheney Stearns again for the touchdown. Extra points no good, but Ken Island 16 to 3 at the half and the Bucks will just keep rolling from there. Ken Island with a big win 38 to 3 over the Seahawks. Guys, we'll send it back to you for some more scores. And we have a couple more scores. We're still looking for that Colonel Richardson Arcadia score if there was any Anybody that was in attendance there in Arcadia, <laughs> Virginia know, tonight, uh, population of 300 maybe, Arcadia, yeah. Virginia. So if one You're of right. you was there, just send us a score. Why don't you? Why high uh, getting back in the win column? Somebody Ooh, had to feel the wrath tonight. Yeah. Uh, just ended up being Snow Hill uh, to the tune of Second 60 of to nothing. Cambridge South Dorchester, their fourth win in a row. They get a big one at home against Nandua and Queen Anne's. Also getting back in the win column against their rival, Kent County, uh, by a final of 28 to 8. So what do you want to talk about that you didn't have a chance? I mean, I'm, I'm assuming it's got to be one of those games that, uh, that Drew had. Yeah. I mean, any takeaways I mean, we you? just said we just said it, you know, obviously a disappointing uh, end to the night for Easton. Right. Uh, but we, we should also start talking about how Kent Island is doing and how they're playing. Yeah. Um, you know, their only loss so far this year is to Easton. Mm -hmm. uh, traditionally, they are a tough team physically and mentally, and what we've been able to see them do, not only at home, but also on the road, how they've been taking teams apart, especially defensively, right. is very impressive by Coach Damian Ferragamo's squad. Uh, they look like the old Ken Island teams of the old days. Uh, you know, they had a couple, uh, they had a letdown last year and uh, maybe the year before that. Uh, but they look a lot like those teams yeah. that I used to face that I was, I didn't want to play against them. Every <laughs> time you woke up from playing against a Ken Island team, uh, you were bruised, you were pretty bruised up and that's what those guys look like this time. All right. And Parkside, of course, getting a big win oh, tonight. Oh, Parkside so. still rolling. Cruising. Doing their thing. All right. That's going to do it uh, for our Maryland in block. When we come back, an emotional yes. night capping off an emotional week into an emotional weekend at Woodbridge. The Blue Raiders looking to fight like four and stay undefeated. Keep it here. My name is Trenton Hillard. I play for North Carolina High School, and this is Delmarva Sports Insider.